few months ago, I spotted something weird. For once, it wasn't a mirror, but rather a small piece of an article on Wikipedia. It's on a page called The List of Rulers of Wales, a country in the United Kingdom. I found myself here exactly one year ago today at the time of writing, as this page is linked to on The Prince of Wales article, a page that's so bad I had just made a 20 minute video attempting to correct it. As I was scrolling down the article I made a mental note of all the usual issues I was expecting to see on a niche topic like this. Dates for things we have no evidence for, kings placed in the wrong location whilst being labelled as being in the wrong location, unusual spellings, uncommon translations, and… huh. A man named Anunathi. Someone that I'd never heard of, and someone that it doesn't seem many other people have heard of either. And now, this article, and especially this section, are not perfect by any means, but our friend Anun here stuck out a lot to me, no doubt helped by the ominous glowing red text. Page does not exist. Oddly foreshadowing. He's been in the back of my head for an entire year, so now it's time for me to tell you about my journey with Wikipedia's king who doesn't actually exist. So first, how did I know that something was wrong? The only reason that this man stood out to me at all was not simply because he was there. I didn't know a lot about the kings in South Wales at this time, and if this name simply stood on its own, I wouldn't have noticed it. But it's accompanied by a long description, the longest of any person on this article, outlining that not only was he the ruler of this state in South Wales, but also of another kingdom to his west, known as Doved. Now, at the time, I'd also just done a 40 minute video on the Kingdom of David. I just spent 8 weeks reading their entire list of kings, analysing every source that I could get access to that covered this dynasty, and I had never seen a king named Anun the come up even once. No historians mention him, and no primary sources did either. So I decided to do some digging. I looked in just a few books. John Davis's A History of Wales? didn't mention him. Carrie Mounds, The Welsh Kings? Nothing. T. Charles Edwards's Wales and the Britons? Also nothing. Peter Bartram's Colossal Welsh Classical Dictionary? Nothing. That just came up with a place called Slanunda. Not what I was looking for. So I shelved it. I made a note on my phone to remind me that it existed, and then forgot about it. What? He doesn't exist. He doesn't even have his own page, I've never seen this name in my entire life. But okay, there's a reason why this video exists now, I didn't forget about him forever. About a month ago I finally revisited the page, saw this man once again, and remembered both that he existed, and also that he didn't. I decided once again to try and finally solve this mystery. Before we continue I want to really quickly talk about the sponsor that makes this video possible. Opera. Opera has released the latest version of their browser, with a totally redesigned look and a brand new functionality. Opera is engineered to provide you with a smooth browsing experience. It comes with a free VPN and ad blocker allowing you to upgrade your browsing privacy. It also comes with dedicated players and messengers, letting you have quick access to all your favourite music and messaging apps right at your fingertips. When doing research for long videos like this one, I tend to have a ton of tabs open at once for multiple topics, and it can become really difficult to keep track of everything, which is why I love Opera's new feature of Tab Islands. With Tab Islands, all of my unorganised tabs can be grouped up, moved around, collapsed, expanded, allowing me to keep track of everything, and focus on the tabs that are actually important. Opera also comes with a browser AI, Aria, which has access to the internet, giving it up to date information and by using the Opera Browser's command line tool, you can quickly and easily ask Aria a question. Enhance your browsing experience today by trying out the latest version of the Opera Browser via the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Thank you. I was on Wikipedia, so I thought that there must be a citation somewhere, right? But no, there was nothing. The references section at the bottom barely lives up to that name. We have a translation of a primary source from 1835, 
I checked inside and found nothing. We have A History of Wales by John Edward Lloyd from 1911, an important work, but one that was written before my great-grandparents were alive. Regardless, Anun the isn't in here either. The Dictionary of Welsh Biography? Also nothing. Finally, the Encyclopedia of Wales, which I couldn't search inside, but as you've seen so far and will soon see even more, I'm certain that Anun the isn't in here. So now what? I felt like I hit a dead end. Again. But do you remember towards the start of this video, I noted how there were a few expected mistakes littered across the page, names and dates and the very occasional odd spelling. So what occurred to me was that perhaps Anun isn't supposed to be spelt like that. So what else was there to do but to revisit the historian Peter Bartram's work, a huge collection of Welsh figures from before the year 1000, and to scroll through all of the A names until I hopefully found something. And eventually, I did. On the very bottom of page 20, I found Anun the. A N N U N. I'd found him. Anun the. Anun the Black. But of course, as I expected, he wasn't at all what the Wikipedia page said he was. Bartram notes here that he's just recorded as a distant ancestor to a king in Wales named Rachan who was active in the early 400s just a little north of our other two Welsh kingdoms. But curiously, Bartram notes his name in these genealogies as Anhun Rex Grecorum and Anun Regis Grecorum. Anun, King of Greece. Gwent, Doved, and Greece. And to be honest with you, this wasn't the weirdest part. Because as I said, this man has nothing to do with David or Gwent. Why was he listed as a king here at all? Finally, I'd found the man after first encountering him a year ago, but I ended up with more questions than I started with, and I didn't know it yet, but this single name in bright red text was a lot weirder than I could have imagined. I decided that if the modern page didn't have any sources connected to our missing man, then perhaps there might have been some when the name was first added. It was a long shot, but I wanted to know how Anon got here in the first place anyways, so I went looking for the edit that first caught my eye. When was Anon the, the King of Gwent, added to this page? On the 20th of June, 2017, the article looked like this. It's a fairly decent list, it's missing a few earlier figures, but I'd honestly say that this one is more accurate than the current one. Regardless, six days later, our man appears. Sort of. Because that, Anun Ap Maxen Uledig, is not what the modern entry says. The current entry was made on the 4th of January in 2019, and that claims that Anun was appointed by the, uh, Emperor Magnus Maximus but the 2017 article says that he was his son. What's going on? Well, I went back to Bartram, and sure enough I found Anun Ap Maxen Uledig, Welsh for Anun, son of Magnus Maximus, one of the many usurping Roman emperors. He appears as Anthun in a single genealogy from here, on the Isle of Man, whilst Anun the only appears as an ancestor to a king here in Brycheiniog, so why is he now listed as both the King of Gwent and David? Well, one of those is much easier to find than the other, because the answer lied within the genealogies of the Kings of David. You see, they're really, really weird. Like all medieval Welsh genealogies, they claim descent from a whole bunch of Roman figures, such as emperors or in David's case just random titles like Protectorus, Stator, and my personal favourite, Cup Bearer and Mixer, all one name. But the most unusual name in David's pedigree is right here, a supposed son of Magnus Maximus, literally named David. David isn't a personal name, so historians such as Bartram and Wade Evans have suggested that perhaps this man is really Magnus Maximus's other son, Anthon, and that he was simply given the nickname David, or the older Dimet because he controlled this region for his father. Regardless of if this is true or not, 
This does appear to be where the Wikipedia articles got on this information from, as they then list a couple of Dovid at Maxen's descendants until finally arriving at an actual King of Dovid. And the reason that I never saw this name is because the author subscribes to this theory that Dovid ap Maxen is really Anthon ap Maxen, or Anun, and then conflated him with another man entirely from the other side of the country, Anun the. Finally, mystery solved. I wasn't going crazy. There's a clear line of reasoning here, even if it's flawed. But hang on, that's not everything, is it? This gets weirder because we've mentioned a lot of places so far. But do you remember Gwent, the kingdom that started this whole chapter and this entire video? How does Anun the or Anthen or whoever fit into here? Also, do you remember that he was called the King of Greece? I will admit, this took me a while, much longer than I thought. The original draft of this video ended here, with me simply saying with frustration that I have no idea why he's listed as the King of Gwent. But I think I finally cracked where this came from. If we move down this list, we encounter another supposed ruler of Gwent, Ednaved, who is another man listed in that genealogy of the Kings of Dovid, and then his supposed son, Dovenwal, who is not in the Dovid genealogy. So, is this where we finally attach to the Kingdom of Gwent? No. Dovenwal here is a man from Astrad Clyde in modern day Scotland. He isn't attached to Anun or Magnus Maximus until a much later manuscript, for reasons that we don't fully understand. But regardless, the Wikipedia article here claims that he's the father of a man named Unir, who was an actual King of Gwent. So we have Magnus, his son Anun, his son Ednaved, all from the Dovid pedigree, a later manuscript that gives him another son, Dovenwal, sure, but Dovenwal doesn't have a recorded son named Anir anywhere. This was a dead end for a while, because as far as I could see, no sources ever mentioned who Anir's father was, and nobody connected him to Dovenwal or Anun. Eventually, I decided that the best course of action would be to read Bartram's notes on all nine of Dovenwall's sons, hoping to somehow find a connection to Gwent, because surely the author of the article didn't just make it up. And eventually, I did. In the second to last sentence, about the very last son, Danegear, there was a small note that simply told me that a man named Yolo Morganug claimed that Dengu's father, Dovenwal, was a king of Gwent. Unfortunately for us, Yolo Morganug was one of the most infamous forgers in all of British history. He famously faked a bunch of manuscripts, and upon searching in one collection of them, I finally found what I was looking for. A fake genealogy never replicated in any of the old texts, listing Anir, son of Dovenwal, the King of Gwent. Anun the is listed as the first King of Gwent because an old source adopted a random man from Ustrad Clyde as his grandson. A man who centuries later would be a victim to one of dozens of forgeries, claiming that he was really a king in South Wales with a son named Anir. Finally, this is why Anun the was here. The man who doesn't actually exist an amalgamation of several different medieval figures transformed into a monarch of three different states in South Wales, to which only one of them is he actually connected to. Except, of course, here he is called the King of Greece. Surprisingly, this was much easier to find than the other two. You see, Anun the does appear in one other place than as an ancestor to the kings of Brecheniog. He shows up in one of my favourite genealogies ever, unceremoniously known as the 16th entry in the Harleian genealogies. It's the ancestry for an unknown line of kings somewhere in modern day Scotland, and there are two things that I find so fascinating about it. First, it's the only known time within this set of genealogies that a Welsh or Brythonic kingdom traced their origins to a pre-Roman figure. In this case, a man named Caractacus. 
They even record his father and grandfather who were later found through coin evidence. And secondly, they also attempt to claim descendants from literally every single Roman Emperor. And one of these Romans is our man Anun the, here spelt as Anton the. This may seem a little unusual, but what makes it stranger is that he is paired with someone else, as this document claims descendants from Anton the and Cleopatra. Anton the and Cleopatra. Antony, Marcus Antonius, Julius Caesar's general who was one of the key figures in the civil war that erupted across the Roman Empire following his assassination. And what part of the empire did he rule from after he achieved victory? Greece. Antonius de Anton the, claimed as a Roman ancestor to the kings of Brecheniog and unceremoniously combined with another man named Anun who is claimed as the ancestor of the kings of David for a Wikipedia article on a random day in 2019. Couple this with an elaborate hoax from 200 years ago, attaching one of the oldest kings of Gwent to this very same Anun, and then we have a recipe for a mistake in an article that's been over 1,000 years in the making. Anun the isn't a real figure. He isn't a son of Valerian, and Cleopatra didn't give birth to Aurelian. He isn't the same Anun as the son of Magnus Maximus and he certainly isn't really the great-grandfather of the kings of Gwent. He didn't rule David, and he didn't rule Gwent, and this Anun didn't rule Brecheniog. But that didn't stop people from mixing and matching and conflating their names, whether it was by a genealogist in the 800s, or a forger in the 1800s, or by a well-meaning editor on the 4th of January 2019. Thank you for watching.